Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have a couple of frequency counters. The first one being this Thandar PFM 200A that was given to me by Andy at Vintage Electronics Repair. So thank you Andy for that. You know I like these types of counters and you may recognise it as a Sinclair. But before we start don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website microchips.net. So let's get started. So this is a Thandar PFM 200A frequency um, counter. It's got one of those lovely LED displays that I like. Unfortunately, the battery cover's missing. And that's not a problem. Anyway, let's power it up and have a look. So it does power on. So I've got it connected up to my GPS reference. And as you can see on range A, it's reading 10 megahertz, which is correct. So range A, 20 hertz to 10 megahertz, no problem. Our range B goes from 5 meg to 200 meg. There's a close up of those LED digits, which I think look absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, but we switch it on to range B and it doesn't read at all which it should do because range b is 5 to 200 megahertz so it looks like we've got a problem with range b so it must be a prescaler issue i reckon so to get this apart there's a pin you normally have to remove that's already been taken out and you slide the back cover off and supposedly it just pops off but that's a little bit harder than what it seems but eventually it does come off revealing the insides and everything looks okay on the inside still got its protective plastic on the back so yeah everything looks okay so let's see if we can have a guess at what's wrong with this so we know it's something to do with range B. So there is a schematic and service manual available. And looking in the service manual, it does say that if range A is working, then IC4 is fine. And IC4 being the main processor chip, so that's fine. But it's saying that if range B is not working, we should take TR1, TR2 and IC1. So what are those? So I see one is a little eight-legged one just on the left and I see four you can see is the big display controller. So we know that's working because it works on range A. So let's have a look at why. So it's saying TR1, TR2 and I see one if range B is not working. So TR1 and TR2, I check those, there's no problem. So IC1, so pin 4 of IC1, we should have the output signal. And then we've got pin 5 of IC2A, which should be the division down. So IC1 being at the top, so we've got pin 1 as the input, pin 4 as the output. Okay and then it goes off into IC2. So if we've got nothing on pin five of IC2, then we should be checking at least pin four of IC1 and pin one of IC1 to see whether we've got in and out. Now what is IC1? Well, IC1 is a divide by 10. So yeah, prescaler. So there's the input we got our signal that's no problem and we check pin 4 and we've got nothing on the output at all so pin 1 we have our signal pin 4 we have nothing so that's not dividing down so i think this is a good place to start and we've already eliminated the two transistors because these are before that in the circuit so yeah, I think it could be that. Luckily, they are available. 
So let's get this apart. And see if we can't sort it out. So I've taken off the front decal. Didn't really allow me access to much. Only the switch that we need to move. So I've desoldered the connections on the bottom. And we'll try and get the board out into some position where we can work on it. Now switch is making it a little bit awkward, but we'll move that out of the way. And there's our IC1, so an SP8660, which is a divide by 10, up to 150 megahertz. So I reckon that's a good place to start. And luckily we have some that look like they are new old stock. I hope they're genuine. One got kind of crushed in the mail, but they, they look the same as the one that's in there. So with the trusty desoldering gun, let's begin to take this chip out. And see whether this is our problem. I did check the supply to the chip that was present. So it all points down to being this being at fault. And I didn't notice that there was actually solder connections on the top of the board. That is um, very important later. So there we are, SP8660. So we put the new chip in and there's our input signal and our output signal has changed. We've got this weird signal, but this isn't correct. So I'd actually disconnected pin five of the, um, the next chip along just to isolate it. And then I noticed there was no ground to this chip due to it being soldered on the top. And as soon as I connected the ground on the top, we had a signal on the output, which is the division of the input signal. Now I didn't see anything on the display because I got the next chip disconnected. So I was thinking that I'd still got a fault. But then when I reconnected the chip back up, well, you'll see everything started to behave. So there's a connection that I hadn't soldered on the top, which is the ground connection to the chip. So if you just connect your negatively to a common ground and measure the positive on the chip, it looked like it was reading. It looked like the voltage was there, but there wasn't a ground. And there's that lovely LED display with an intersil uh, main chip, just like the Pi one we had. And there we have it, range A and range B are now working. So I've got it reconnected back up to my GPS reference and we'll just calibrate it. Just calibrate it against that and then it should be close enough. This um, counter is probably not the most accurate of counters, but it should be pretty close. Yeah, it's reading good. I like it. Put it onto range B. Yep. So range A, range B working. Fantastic. So it says it goes up to 200 megahertz. So we've got it against another frequency source. So as you can see, 145 megahertz. And we'll just go up a little bit higher. So I'm just changing the frequency on the, the test transmitter I've got there. And it is going into a dummy load, so there's no problem. And as you can see, 166 megahertz. So to stick this front decal back down. I've just used some double-sided tape. 
giving it a clean up and fantastic it's brought it back which I'm very pleased about because I think the display on this looks absolutely fantastic so yeah very happy with this I had one of these many many years ago and I don't know what happened to it so I'm just happy that I've got one back so yeah all ranges work the higher you go up the range the longer the gate time that is reading pretty accurate yeah it's all good all because of this little um, divide by 10 chip which luckily we managed to find I think this one actually come from China so yeah well it works anyway so we're going to have a look at this next and no it's not an Altai meter it is actually another counter a 40 meg frequency counter the CTE FD50 I'm unsure whether this works or not but we're going to have to be very careful because this has got a positive outside and negative centre so we'll definitely be changing that round so let's take it apart and have a look what's inside it see what magic's in here and everything looks okay on the circuit board side on the print side in there all discrete components no microcontroller in sight we've got some date codes off that 1980 by the looks of it 81 I can see 1980 1980 so I can say this is roughly maybe 81 there's the back of the LED display nothing looks burnt up it doesn't look like there's any protection across that power socket so before we do anything we're going to turn the power socket around and turn it into positive center so I don't accidentally plug it into my bench power supply and reverse polarity it because I'm sure reverse polarity would kill this quite quickly so it's just as simple as turning the input socket round and soldering it back up again and that will turn it into a positive centre which I think is a lot safer than having it positive outside so excessive use of solder and what we're going to do just as protection we're going to slap a diode across the back so if it ever does get reversed it will shut down the power supply or blow a fuse but it certainly won't blow the the um, TTL logic that's in there so we're going to change the labeling on the back to reflect our new polarity so using my dymo printer 9 to 12 volt positive center absolutely lovely so let's plug it into my bench power supply without having to worry about polarity switch it on And immediately it comes on it's looking good but that red film across the front's looking a bit tired so I've actually got an adapter there to change it to BNC now we need to do something with this because this is just falling off and I don't think it'll look as good with no red film on it
and I don't want to leave it hanging off so I put a little bit of alcohol on it and we'll take it off as you can see the glue has started to degrade and look quite nasty so we'll clean that up with some isopropyl alcohol on a cloth get rid of all the old glue just like so now trying to find some adhesive clear red film was quite fun but as you can see with no red film on it it still looks nice but it doesn't look as good with just the clear I think it needs the red on it to make it look a little bit nicer so I managed to find some clear red film on um, on Amazon for the um, for car light tint this is supposed to be adhesive and it's clear doesn't feel very adhesive but there is layers on it there's protective layers as you can see it did take me a couple of attempts to get this right but luckily this is adhesive and it sticks on and then with a little bit of heat from the uh, hot air gun just on low heat just moistens up that adhesive a little bit more and we'll use a scalpel to go around the edges and tidy it up so we're going to leave a little bit extra so we can fold it over and hopefully it won't come away I know it's not exactly the same colour as the other one but I think it'll do yeah that looks a lot better and there it is against my GPS counter uh, GPS reference counting nicely so luckily there was nothing wrong with this apart from a little bit of TLC but I bought it because of that LED display so a couple of nice additions to the collection there yeah very happy with that I think these displays look absolutely fantastic so there we have it a Thandar frequency meter and the CTE International FD50 frequency counter all working all calibrated all looking good so anyway if you like the video don't forget to like share subscribe comment join facebook join patreon buy me a coffee have a look at my website thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video